Joining BYU Sports Nation right now, Johnny Harleen. Johnny, you're a football guy, one of the notable heroes in BYU football history. We're going to start with our Twitter question for you. What is your bold prediction for BYU at Texas tomorrow? Bold prediction? Uh, well, I, I, I'm going to go with BYU. I don't know how bold that is. They're the favorite. But I'm going to be very bold. Instead of saying winning by two, I'm going to say 31-27. They're going to win by four. Oh, double, double the odds. 27 okay. okay. What makes you confident that BYU goes into us and wins this game? Uh, they look good. Uh, you know, just watching last week, they look like they're ready for the season. They, they're kind of figuring out how to, how to execute things consistently, get in the end zone. Um, you know, and they've they got to keep it up for the whole game. But – they're, uh, they, they looked good last week. I think they're going to be ready to play. Johnny Harleen joining BYU Sports Nation. What specific things did you see within the offense, notably Taysom Hill, that made you think, okay, this could be a special team. This could be a special year for BYU. Well, yeah, you, you mentioned it. Taysom looks really dialed in already. He, I mean, he was, you know, very accurate, just really tight with the receivers. Um, so a true, he's really turned into a true dual threat, I think. And, uh, you know, last year they were able to run all over Texas. And, and I just, you know, I don't think that's going to have, it's not going to happen quite like that again. I think with a team like Texas where, you know, they have talented guys, you, you know, you know, those guys can play. I think what happened last year is probably more a matter of just some lack of discipline and assignments and, um, Scheme-wise, something was off there where he was just able to kind of run all over them. Uh, so I expect them to probably be a little more dialed in for the game, you know, on defense and be expecting the, the run a little bit more. But, uh, you know, with, with the offense looking a little bit more sharp in, in, all, in all aspects of the offense, throwing and passing, it's going to be a lot more difficult to just uh, zero in on one option. That's, that's what any good offense has is, you know, they have at least two options of what they can do. Um, so if if you're heavily favoring one, they're going to do the other and, and vice versa. So it makes it a lot harder to defend, and BYU looks like they've been able to kind of uh, tighten up their execution quite a bit compared to, compared to last season. The idea was year two with Robert and I, Taysom Hill, like every offensive lineman, but Manaki Vitae back, that you could make the offense a little more complex. Did you see more complexity against UConn from BYU's offense? Um, yeah, I mean, it looked like they were just able to do a, a few more things. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm not a big guy on this, you know, criticizing play calling too much. It, it's really all about what the players can do out there. And when the players are, are getting more comfortable executing their assignments consistently, then that just gives the offensive coordinator, you know, just so much more leeway as far as, um, you know, just being able to call whatever play and you know the guys are going to go out there and get it done. And uh, that kind of, once you have the fundamentals down to being able to execute it, that does really open it up to being able to, you know, expand things a little bit, add in a few new wrinkles here and there. Um, but it all really boils down to yeah, the, the execution and the experience of the players in, in being able to do stuff like that for sure. Johnny Harleen, BYU tight end from 2004 to 2006 on BYU Sports Nation. BYU has gone away from the traditional tight end model that you enjoyed so much, Johnny. Now they're, they're spreading the ball around. They have multiple weapons. Is there enough football to go around to keep everybody happy on this team? Well, if you're running 100 plays a game, there should be. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, with, with our team, we have – you know, and I think when you're on the team, I think most guys are pretty happy if you're winning. You know, it's you know, it's it's always nice if you're if you're one of the guys, you know, catching a bunch of passes and scoring some touchdowns. That that's kind of a bonus for sure. But if you're winning, for the most part, the guys are going to be happy. And so, um, you know, I was happy. With, you know, so what happened with me my junior year? I was you know, catching a bunch of passes. Me and Curtis Brown ended up being the real focal points of the offense we were and teams could really dial in on us and that's that's some of the games where we struggled and in the off season John Beck and and our four you know main wideouts they really got dialed in with each other um always staying after practice doing extra work and that just opened up our offense so much for everyone else and at the beginning of the season I, I wasn't catching as many passes and everything as 
as I had been the season before, um, you know, which wasn't a huge deal. Like I was saying, it's, it's always nice, but it's not like I was upset or disgruntled or anything like that. Um, but uh, once, once the, the defenders, you know, the other defense started realizing they couldn't really just dial in on, on me and Curtis, that they had to be play honest with all the other receivers, you know, then it opened it back up for me, and I finished the season as one of the guys catching a ton of passes, scoring a bunch of touchdowns. So, you know, it's the, the more options you have on offense, the better for everybody involved. Johnny Harleen with us on BYU Sports Nation. Johnny, BYU matched up against a traditional power like Texas, and they have more exposure than they ever have. That was the big move to go to independence was so that BYU could become more visible to the public eye. If you had the opportunity that BYU has now to play on ESPN instead of the mountain, and I, and I you know, rest in peace. That's like saying mountain. Voldemort to run here. <laughs> <laughs> if you had had the opportunity at the exposure BYU football enjoys now, do you think that things would have gone any differently for you as an individual because you had a dynamic career at BYU? It's hard to say. Um, uh, you know, it's very possible. Um, to, you know, we didn't, for finishing a, as a team ranked in the top 15 in the country, we didn't have, I think John was the, John Beck was the only guy drafted from our team, you know. So and that could that, that definitely can be as a result of not having quite as much exposure all across the country. So, I mean, sure it, it could be, but um, you know I still had the chance to go in and and uh, I was you know with practice squad and everything for the year and just had my injury. So all in all, it it, it would have worked out fine I think if I hadn't been injured, but. Uh, um, you know, it, it, it's possible, too, that maybe it could have gotten drafted, things like that. So who knows? But uh, maybe I'm being very definitive for you guys. You're welcome. <laughs> Johnny, I've been corrected by one of our Twitter followers. At Bridger Quinton Hill says, please refer to Johnny as the BYU tight end. So I, I apologize for not giving you that distinction. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bridger. Bridger and I went to high school together. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> it all Bridger. makes sense now. Bridger weighs in on uh, Twitter quite a bit on the show. We love it. Uh, <laughs> obviously, earlier this week, the news of Max Hall, uh, you know, saddened BYU fans to kind of see where he's at, I guess, right now. You wrote a poignant article on Deep Shades of Blue uh, about life after football that I thought was really good. For those that haven't read it, do you mind kind of summarizing your feelings about, about life after football for guys? Yeah, so I, I, you know, I wanted to write the article because, you know, not that I don't really have any no, more knowledge about Max's specific situation than anyone else does. I, I don't know, you know, how long he's kind of had this struggle or anything like that. But uh, I kind of just wanted to throw out there, give people an idea. Here's some of the the difficulties that people can deal with in a situation. Max's situation is pretty similar to mine, where, um, you know, you you. Kind of taste, you get a taste of the NFL, but you never really have that career that you, you were, you know, hoping for. Um, and that can that can be something pretty difficult to deal with for a lot of guys for, for a few reasons. Um, and, and so, a couple of things I wanted really wanted to point out is first of all, you know, the, as far as having empathy towards someone, it, for me, it's not so, it's not something where you just kind of feel sorry for somebody and. You know, you kind of looked at him as a victim or anything like that. Because I mean, you know, he's he's a grown man, and these are these are some poor decisions that that uh, that he made that kind of put him in the spot. Um, but that doesn't mean you know we can't empathize, and, and I definitely can understand why. Um, you know, going through that phase can be really tough, and so there's a few different reasons for it. Um, you know, why why somebody. Going through, you know, ending their athletic career can can really it can kind of be a fertile ground for kind of self-destructive or addictive type of behaviors. And uh, a couple of things that I that I think are, you know, make it that way are, um, you know, first you, you're kind of used to having this this thrill of this rush of being able to go out there and play in these football games, and, and so this kind of thrill factor is missing for you. Um, it can really kind of lower your self-esteem because, you know, the, all these guys seem really confident and everything, even cocky and arrogant as they're playing. I'm not talking about Max specifically. I'm just, I'm just saying in general, athletes, people kind of perceive them that way, that they're extremely confident individuals. Um, but a lot of that confidence is really, when you think about it, is built up by these outside influences, um, you know, 
people around you telling you're great, your, your coaches saying, hey, you know, good job. And a lot of your confidence is riding so much on, on what other people think of you. Yeah. Um, and those go away. It, yeah, and when you're done, it's like that stops, and you're kind of like, well, you know, who am I? As a, you know, who, you know, your your identity is kind of taken away as a, as this athlete. So you're kind of like, who am I? You can lose a lot of your self confidence, um, and not only from these outside supports, but I, I, the part that I actually think is most interesting is the the idea of this um, this kind of dark side that you have with you that's kind of urging you on as a competitor. It's this this really just relentless instinct and and kind of primal drive that, that you want to win it it's not that you just you want to win it's this part of you that just has to win and as a as a you know high level competitor a lot of guys felt that quite a bit you know and i think a good example of it you think of like looking back at richard sherman after, right after the game you know <laughs> that game in the nfc championship last year and he's screaming and going nuts and you could just see that that uh, that relentless, that that pure killer instinct type of thing, kind of coming through. That that's kind of what I refer to is just that that drive, and um, yeah. and you have that as a competitor, and it, it really spurs you on to, to these. It can really help you reach great heights. But then when you're done, it's like it can really kind of turn on you because you, you kind of feel this guilt or this, uh, you know, you're. It kind of hates you for for having to stop playing. You know, even though you may have been injured, or you know, you know, for whatever reason, your career is just kind of done, and it's there's not really much more you could have done. There's still that part of you that kind of eats away at you because it's not really a rational thinking part of you. It's just it's just this relentless, uh, this instinct, instinctual part of you. So, um, to me, I, I don't know. Just thinking about that is, is kind of fascinating, and that's that's really kind of one of the things that that probably. Um, I, I personally, you know, struggled with the most when I was done is this part of me that was just urging me on and just like refused to concede. Um, but you know, at some point you have to, but it, it doesn't care that you have to, you know, it still kind of yeah. eats at you. So, um, anyway, so that was kind of a, you know, a, a few different reasons, uh, why it can be a difficult landscape for, for these, you know, for athletes to navigate when they're coming out of their careers and having to finish up. Um, and I guess the fourth reason why would be just, you know, a lot of them have exposure to these kind of prescription narcotic pain medications as they're, you know, as they're playing, right. just dealing with pain and everything. So that can, that can end up, you know, being as big an issue as any of the others combined. Yeah. But, and if you, so. haven't re if you haven't read the article, I recommend uh, going and reading Johnny's article. I'll tweet that out a bit, little bit later. But let's end with this, Johnny. Obviously, back to Harleen, you know, defined your BYU career. How many times on the daily... <laughs> Do you get some kind of mention of that to your face? <laughs> well, it, it, it all depends on, on where I'm at. And, you know, in Utah County, if I'm out and about, and, you know, very rarely do people come up to me and are like, hey, Johnny, you know, if, if, if they hear my name, then they'll recognize me and they'll talk to me about it. Um, but it's not – but just as far as my face goes, people don't recognize me. I don't know if maybe I – You should I just walk around with a helmet on. Yeah, you should walk around with a T-shirt that says "Yes, I'm still open." Thirty-three, yeah. thirty-one. There's, yeah, a, there's a picture of, of that play in my house. Yeah, but but quite often, you know, if if I'm out and about and like people hear my name, that's when they'll recognize it and, and you know start talking <laughs> to me about it. So <laughs> it's always fun. Johnny, great to have you with us on BYU Sports Nation. We'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one. You got.